barely 20 years of age, short, well-built, a heavy crop of hair. In fact, people compared him to a young lion. He was from a rich and a noble family. He was very attached to his parents. Particularly, he was very close to his mother. And most of his time was spent making and repairing bows and arrows and practicing archery as if he was preparing for a battle to come. But this young man, he found no satisfaction. He wasn't happy with the worshipping of idols and false gods, the way of his people. And he thought of their belief as being corrupt, a wrong belief. And he disagreed with these practices that they did. There will be a number of people who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon that day where there will be no shade besides the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day where people will be drowning in their sweat. Some people will be drowning up to their ankles, others will be drowning up to their knees, others will be drowning up to their shoulders, and some, some people will be totally drowned in their own sweat. On that day, one of the people who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be that youth who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person, according to some narrations, was the third person to embrace Islam out of the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in some narrations the fourth. He was one of the six who Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu who chose to be a Khalifa after him. And he was one of the ten who the Prophet ﷺ guaranteed Jannah. He was known as the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ and he was also known as a knight of Islam. His real name was Sa'd ibn Malik, but he's better known as Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas He mentions that three days before embracing Islam, I saw a dream that I was in a dark place and then a moon came over and it illuminated everything which was around me. And I began to follow this moon. And later on I saw another three people under this moon. And those three people were Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Zayd ibn Haris and Ali radiallahu anhu. And I asked them, when did you reach here? They said, just now. And then soon after this, he woke up and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came to him. And he softly spoke to him. He explained to him, Muhammad has come to deliver a message, has received revelation from Allah and he's been sent with the religion of guidance and truth. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, may Allah please with him, then took Sa'ad to the Prophet sallallahu in one of the alleyways of Mecca and it was late afternoon by this time and the Prophet ﷺ had just prayed Salat al-Asr. Sa'ad was very excited. He responded well to the message of Abu Bakr. He knew there was truth in this. And he was ready to accept the truth of Islam. The religion of the one true God Allah. Here is a young man. Still in his youth. A young man full of great potential and maybe other young people in Mecca will look to the example of Sa'ad and also follow there were other people though who were not happy especially so was his mother I swear by Allah, if you do not renounce this religion, then me, your mother, I will not eat, I will not drink, and I will not take shade in the sweltering heat of Makkah. And when I die, people will taunt you, Sa'ad, they will say, Oh Sa'ad, you are the murderer of my, your mother. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu narrates that one day elapsed and my mother ate nothing. And she woke up and she was in a bad state. And the next day elapsed and she ate nothing, drank nothing. And she was even in a worse state. And upon the third day, when she was literally on her last legs, I went up to my mother and I said, Ya Ummah, 
said, I swear by Allah, my mother, if you had a hundred lives and you killed yourself a hundred times, I would not denounce this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to eat, eat. And if you don't want to eat, then don't eat. And when she saw the resolve of her child, she stopped her hunger strike. After this upon occasion, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make dua that Allah guides his mother. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicated for my mother. And he says, I, as I went home and I entered my house and I heard my mother reciting, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Now, in the early days of Islam, the Muslims were weak and few in number. And they didn't want to cause problems with the Quraysh. So when they would pray, they would go out in a group and go to the outskirts of Mecca, where they could be praying in a jama'ah, and nobody would see them, nobody would bother them. But one day, as they were praying, a group of the mushrikeen, the idol worshippers, saw them praying and starts to insult them and it ended up in a small fight and in that fight Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas took the jawbone of a camel and hit one of them and wounded him and this was the first time that blood was shed in the history of Islam more than 10 years later when permission was given for the Muslims to fight. Sa'ad ibn Waqqas, he fought in Badr when his younger brother wanted to come and fight in the battle and he was refused at first and he cried. Sa'ad, at the end of the battle, returned alone without his brother. And then came the battle of Uhud. And really, in the battle of Uhud, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was one of the heroes of this battle. When the rumor spread that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had passed away, many of the Sahaba left the battlefield. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu mentioned, I was sitting there and I was thinking what to do. And then I made a firm conviction that I will fight until the end. And then I saw a group of people around a person. And they were protecting this person. And he said, I jumped up. And I went into the middle and I stood next to the Prophet Sallallahu And on that day, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he shot a thousand arrows. And every time he would shoot an arrow, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would give him an arrow. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu would shoot an arrow. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May my mother and my father be sacrificed for you a thousand times for Sa'ad. He says, when I was standing next to the Prophet Sallallahu I saw two men protecting the Prophet Sallallahu and they had white clothing on. And he says, I swear by Allah, I did not see these people before that day and I did not say see them after that day. Allah showed him the angels which were protecting the Prophet Sallallahu on the battle of Uhud. In Hajjatul Wada' when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Hajj, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu became ill, so ill that he thought he was going to die and already he had quite a bit of wealth. So he says, O Messenger, I have got so much wealth and I've only got one heir, that is my daughter. Nobody else do I have who's going to take my wealth. So I want to donate all my wealth in the cause of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu refused. So he said, okay, let me donate half of it. He refused. He said, okay, let me donate a third of it. Then the Prophet ﷺ made the famous statement regarding inheritance. Oh Sa'ad, a third of donation is more than enough. You are not allowed to bequeath more than a third. It is better for you to leave your heirs wealthy than to leave them beggars who shall be asking from the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. But he got better after that, mashallah, and he had many children thereafter. One day the Prophet ﷺ told his companions that a man is going to come just now he who walks through is from paradise. So the people looked around to see who is going to come in. Who walked in? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu looked at him and said, he followed him and he says, Oh Sa'ad, tell me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, you are from amongst those in paradise. What is it that you have done, O Sa'ad, that we don't do? So he looked at Abdullah ibn Amr. Ibn al-As and he said, Oh my little son, I tell you something. There is nothing much that I do. I don't do much more than you. But what I need to tell you, 
Every night I ensure that I have no hatred, grudge or ill feeling against any of my brethren. I clean my heart. So he had a clean heart, he had a clean tongue and he had clean wealth. For those three to get together in a person, not so easy, subhanallah. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, in the Khalifat of Umar radiallahu an, Umar made Sa'ad the commander-in-chief of the Muslim army that was sent to Qadisiyah, Persia, which is the heir of Iran at the moment. What Umar wanted was to bring an end to the power of the Sasanians, the Persians at that time. Because for centuries, they had dominated the region. They were the strongest. They had the power there. And to take on this task was no easy thing. In fact, the Persians were great in number. They were well equipped. Soldiers of the Muslims came from every single distant area. And Umar, after consulting, had appointed Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas as a commander in chief. So this army set off 30,000 strong. And when it reached a place called Qadisiyah, camped out against the Persians. The Persians had over 100,000 soldiers. And the leader was a brilliant commander called Rustum. They prayed Salatul Dhuhr, the whole army. Then he shouted the cry for battle, charged with the blessings of Allah. And the battle went on. And this battle was so fierce that it went on for four days. And the Muslims fought with courage, with valor, with skill. But in that time period, the Persians had a corps of elephants, one of their battalions, and it created a lot of problems for the Muslims, killed many of them, until some of the Muslims made a rush in the direction of Rustum. And Allah decreed that a storm would rise up, and Rustum's canopy, his tent area, where he was sat or camped out, was blown into the river, and he tried to run. The Muslims found him, detected him, and they killed the commander of the Persians. The Persians got disheartened and they ran off. They left the battlefield. 30,000 people from both sides fell. And the Battle of Qadisiyah is one of the main battles that decided world history. Two years after this incident, Sa'ad was again sent to fight the Persians. This time to take their capital, Tessiphon. Sa'ad went, but as they reached one of the main rivers in that area, it's called the River Tigris, they found it to be very, very overflown because it had rained a lot, very difficult to cross. Sa'ad was ready to give the order for all the army to move at one time. Knowing how difficult it could be and that many could lose their lives. What did Sa'ad do? Again, he put his trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told all of the soldiers to recite. We seek help from Allah and rely only on Him. Allah is sufficient for us and is the best of defenders. There is no power or might except with Allah. They elevated the Most High. And what happened next was a miracle. Imam al bayhqi says that they rode as if they were on top of the water. And this shocked the Persians. They couldn't believe this. And the army made it across. And they beat the Persian forces. And Sa'ad went down in history as the hero of Qadisiyah and also the conqueror of Tessiphon, the Persian capital. 
When Saad radiallahu anhu was the governor of Kufa, he once came out of the masjid and he saw a large crowd of people gathered. And he asked them, what is the problem? And they said, amongst us is a man who curses Ali radiallahu anhu. And Saad radiallahu anhu said, oh my brother, do not curse Ali, for I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to Ali, he said, oh Ali, are you not pleased with the fact that you are to me? Like Harun alayhi salatu wasalam was to Musa, besides the fact that there will be no Prophet to come after me. I heard the Prophet sallallahu say this. And the man said, I will still curse Ali. And Saad radiallahu anhu said, if you curse him, then I will curse you. And he said, well, who do you think you are? Do you think you are a Prophet that Allah will accept your curse? And Saad radiallahu anhu, he went back into the masjid. He did wudu. He prayed two rakats, sunnah. And then he cursed this person. And the narration mentioned that they saw a wild camel come into Kufa. And it was as though this wild camel was looking for a particular person. And it came straight up to this person. And it bit him and it trampled him until it killed him. Upon occasion, when Umar radiallahu anhu was Amirul Mu'mineen, one of Saad's slaves came out. And she had these flimsy clothes on. Silk flimsy clothes and the wind began to blow and as a consequence it, exp- it exposed her body. And Umar radiallahu anhu was Umar and he had a whip with him. And Umar radiallahu anhu took out his whip and he whipped her. And Saad radiallahu anhu moved forward and he whipped Saad. And Saad fell to the floor. And when Saad was standing up, Saad raised his hand to curse Umar radiallahu anhu. And Umar radiallahu anhu went running to him and he gave him the whip in his hand. He said, whip me back. Because he knew if Saad raised his hands, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept the dua of Saad. He was also appointed the governor of Kufa and Najd at one stage during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And he passed away in al madinah al munawwara at the age of 80. And he was one of the last who passed away from amongst the Muhajireen. And he was the last to pass away from the ten who were blessed with paradise. And I want to end with a beautiful story, something that happened during the time when he was about to die. His head was in the laps of his son, and his son was crying profusely. The father was approximately 80 years old, and the son is crying. So Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu, he looks at his son and he says, Oh my son, why are you crying? Are you worried that your father is going to go? He says, Oh my son, don't worry. I promise you, Allah will never punish me. And I know I am from paradise. But there is one thing I request from you, my son. Open my certain closet that I have and bring from it what you see. When the son went to that place and brought the little box, he took out a garment that was made of wool. And the, the, this man, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, he had taken part in so many of the battles. He says, Oh my son, when I die, and when you enshroud me, use this, O oh my son, because this is the clothing that I had on me on the day of Badr. <laughs> and I would like to meet Allah with the clothing that I had on myself on the day of Badr. And I hope that Allah will grant me Jannah as a result. I took part in that battle and we were approximately 313. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us good news. And I definitely do know that when I meet Allah, I would like this garment to be on me.